If he was a shark merman, that'd be so cool, because did you know that sharks have like two dicks? Hello, and welcome to Whisper of Blue. This is a horror romance dating sim in which a beautiful merman is brought to your workplace. Despite being such a gorgeous creature, you really shouldn't let your guard down. Let's get started. He's so cute, I'm so ready. The sea truly is a realm of mystery. An aquarium, no matter how big, is merely a poor replica created for us humans to experience a bit of this magic for ourselves. There you go. I contemplate my hard work while wiping a bead of sweat off my forehead. My reflection smiling back at me in this perfectly clear glass I spent my afternoon on. It is new. I thought it was never gonna end. With a sigh, I throw the towel on the tray next to the spray, feeling content with myself. Maybe one day, my perseverance will be rewarded and I'll do more than just cleaning around. Sure, sometimes I get to feed the fishes, but that's more of an occasional thing when the primary caretaker is absent. I knew what I was getting into when I took this post and it's definitely an important part of the job, but interacting with the marine residents of the aquarium seems like an enriching experience. It hasn't been long since I've been hired, so all I have to do is wait for an opportunity. Excuse me, I flinch at the sudden touch on my shoulder and I turn around. Oh, Sophia, aka my caring and energetic red-headed colleague. She's my senior and the one who showed me the ropes of the job since day one. We even sometimes grab a drink together outside the work hours. Maybe that means she's more of a friend than a colleague at this point. Did you finally finish cleaning? Yep, finally. People just can't keep their hands to themselves and they leave fingertips everywhere. What about you? I was just about to rearrange the food for our friends tomorrow before taking off. She shook the basket of freshly cut vegetables and shrimps as proof. I wish someone would give me food on a daily basis too. Maybe try to be a little guppy in your next life. I'll keep that in mind. Sophia lets out a friendly chuckle. Anyway, were you about to head home? Yep. I was just about to dispose of my trail before you came. Then I'm coming at the right time. For my pretty eyes? That too, but Mr. Marlowe asked for you. And your pretty eyes. I blinked in surprise. Is that a good thing? I don't know. Did you do something wrong? Well, I think it was late the other day. Really? How much? About five minutes. He's pretty strict about punctuality, but I doubt he summoned someone just for that. He would send an email at most. Then why? In the six months I spent here, I only got small glimpses of him from afar. Well, I can't be too sure of that, but that probably has something to do with the incident the other day. You know, she didn't need to finish her sentence for me to understand. After all, that was all anyone could talk about lately, and for good reason. Is... Devin... okay? Sophia couldn't help but wince. Ugh, the poor guy. I wasn't there when it happened, but I heard it was a sad sight. As far as I know, his life isn't in danger, but he probably won't be around before long, if he ever comes back. Not that I would blame him if he doesn't. It's not like I was close with Devon, but still, his incident raised a lot of attention and concerns. Not only among us, but with the media too. Despite our best efforts to keep it private, that's understandable, but what does that have to do with me? Well, I didn't say it was for sure. But someone will have to replace him, you know? I could feel my blood turn cold. Me? Don't panic, that's just a possibility. You should go see for yourself what he wants. And you better go quickly. You know how he despises late people. She took a few steps behind, about to head her way with a wave and an apologetic smile. I need to go too. Good luck. And just like that, I was left alone. As if being summoned by my boss wasn't nerve-wracking enough, I may now become next in line to replace... Devon. After what happened to him? No... Calm down. As Sophia said, it might be something completely unrelated. Maybe he needs to scold me for something. Yeah, that must be it. No worries. And so with the confidence of a plankton in front of a whale, headed to the boss's office, I took a deep breath in a vain hope to ease my tense body before knocking on the door. Come in. Somehow, I felt like I went back in time to just when I was getting interviewed for my internship. It felt like a long time ago, but it wasn't. Well, Mr. Marlowe, hey, yo, is there a Mrs. Marlowe? You're hot as fuck. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Oh, wait, he's got the wedding ring on. Okay, no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sure they got, I take it back. Don't worry, no, nope. Your Honor, I would like to take the last couple of seconds and strike them from the record. This did not happen. Ahem. <clears throat> there is a Mrs. Marlowe, and I'm sure she's a very fine lady. All right, water. God. I forgot how intimidating that man was. It wasn't just the several scars that marked his body. Hey, you sh shut up, Edie. But even his growl sounding- You are not helping me. But even his growl sounding voice and his demeanor bore an aura of authority. Yes, but he's married, so therefore, I shall cease. Don't just stand there. 
comes it down. There's a rumor saying he was once in the Marines. It may be totally invented, but somehow, I don't doubt it one second. I hurriedly carry myself to the chair in front of his desk as he put down the papers he was inspecting. How's your experience been with any job so far? Pretty good. I used to struggle a bit at the start, but thanks to Sophia, I got the hang of it. I do still have trouble sometimes, but overall, I'd say I'm getting pretty decent at this. Honestly, cleaning glass isn't that hard. It just takes a lot of dedication and patience. Especially with the size of some of the tanks. I almost fell off the ladder more than once. The slippery floor didn't really help. I see. Well, not everyone excels in their job from day one. It'll come naturally with time. He crossed his arms as he leaned on his desk, and I instinctively straightened up my back. After the small talk, here comes the real stuff. As you probably guessed it, I didn't call you here just to ask about your day. I'm sure you've seen our most recent resident. I nodded at his words. The merman. Oh pretty eyes. Devon was above the aquarium to feed him. We didn't expect the merman to be able to jump high enough to catch his ankle. Thankfully he wasn't alone and he was well equipped so we managed to get him out before he sustained any fatal injuries. His days aren't counted but I'm not gonna hide it from you. It wasn't pretty. I didn't like where this discussion was headed. As of now I have no idea when or if Devon will come back. His eyes pierced straight into my soul. Someone needs to take on his job. Yep I knew it. Though I didn't say anything, my thoughts must have been written all over my face since he lets out a raspy sigh. Of course, I have no intention of pressuring you to accept, and but I need you to make a decision quickly as we cannot afford to let that creature unattended for long. If you have any questions, don't hesitate. I want to be the most transparent with you. What exactly happened to Davin? I would normally overrule the question as a private subject between the victim and I. But since it's tied to the work you'll be performing, I cannot hide it from you. After all, it is necessary for you to get all the information at hand to make a sound decision. He marked a pause as if to find the correct words. Basically, Davin lost two of his fingers and his face has been disfigured. But his worst injury was made to his neck that was cleanly cut open. A chilly atmosphere settled in the room. So that explains why nobody's jumped at the job yet. The merman was no joke. As we reached the end of this interview, Mr. Marlowe swiftly slid a sheet of paper on my side of the table. Do read carefully. I don't want you to make a decision you might regret. With a slight hesitation in my hand, I grabbed the contract and began reading. All the needed information was there and sure enough, the salary was much higher. Not that it would matter if I were to die on the job, but it was still nice. For a limited time of three days until the specimen gets extracted towards its new environment, I should manage to not die for those whole three days, right? The pen on the counter seemed to be fiercely eyeing me, silently pleading with me to take it and just be done with it. Without a doubt, the advantages were good. On the other hand, the disadvantages were possibly lethal. Is there truly a good enough reason for me to accept? The merman? Yeah, I'm accepting for the merman. Sure, the money is nice, but it couldn't compare to the thrill of the experience. And the thrill of some underwater fandangling, if you know what I mean. I came here to approach the wild marine life, and now I get to see up close a specimen only seen in Legends. That was a dream come true. Maybe a dangerous one, but one worth dying for. How many people would kill to be in my place? Maybe I was being foolish or too optimistic, but at this point, who cares? I know I'll regret it if I don't take it. My newly found confidence fills my lungs. I grabbed the awaiting pen and began writing down all my info. I didn't get to take a look at my boss's reaction, but it seemed like I heard a hum of appreciation. Uh, miss. Now, I just need a sign with my name. My name is... Uni. Are you done? Yes. Mr. Marley clasped his hand on his desk, giving me a look of appreciation. Then let me congratulate you on your promotion. Woohoo! Money! I like money. Money can be exchanged for goods and services. At this, Mr. Marley stood up, signaling the end of his tense interview. I replicated the gesture and followed him to the door. Somehow, I felt less timid by his side. Surely because he showed more concern and understanding than I expected from a man this size. As we say, don't judge a book by its cover. Thank you once again for your willingness to accept, truth be told. We would have been in a pinch if you didn't. No, um, thank you for the opportunity. I shook the hand he extended to me as he took a card out of his back pocket. You need this to access the tank. It's located in the east wing. You only have to follow the number on the card. Woohoo! Let's go! Let's get some of the mermaid schmeat! The East Wing is where the injured and wild animals are kept before they get released. Except, this one wasn't going to get released. Okay, I feel kind of bad about that. They kept it in a pretty remote area far from the public. Understandably, you should take a look around and familiarize with each other's presence. We still don't know about his level of intelligence, or if he can feel a sense of familiarity. As of now, he's only showed aggression. But just in case, I don't think it would be a bad idea to try to befriend him. However, don't wander too close to the tank if you're alone. 
Only do so if you feel it's an emergency, but remember, your life comes first. I'm not gonna risk the lives of my employees, so be safe and prioritize your safety above all. Got it? He looked at me straight in the eye as he spoke. He was serious. Well, he always was. But this time, more than ever. Understood. I took the card from his hand, securing it in my pocket. Also, don't forget to cover your ears with noise-canceling headphones before entering his room. You find them in the locker near the door, and you can connect it to your walkie-talkie to communicate with the merman's room. We may not know everything about their abilities, but mer people luring humans with their voice is not just in fairy tales, let me assure you. Well, that was reassuring. And the Sud. Do not forget, no matter how human he may look, there's still a wild and unpredictable creature just like the rest of our residents here. Goodbye, Miss Yuni. I step out of the room, letting the door close behind me. Well, got myself in a pro well, I got myself a promotion way faster than I should ever anticipate. Woohoo, money! I was very hesitant at first, but now I'm feeling more confident. Of course, caring for a mystical creature is something many people would die for. And that may just happen to me, but that's a worry for future me. First thing first, the headphones. I inserted the card in the slot of the locker and grabbed the intended item for my survival. That was one thing I didn't expect to be doing in an aquarium, but here we go. Well, I can't even hear my own voice. All I hear is the blood pumping in my ears. Once assured it was safely secured and plugged into my walkie-talkie, I used the same card on the door this time with anticipation. The green light indicated to me that it was finally time for me to encounter the infamous creature that would be in my care for the following days. But, it's not like I expected a reinforced door to be light, but it was way heavier than I expected. I tried forcing it a bit more, but I was quickly met with resistance. Man, come on! Use those- use your little noodle arms! Shoving my shoulder into the door, it opened a bit more. However, it didn't seem like the door itself was the problem. It was like, is there something blocking the door on the other side? My feet took a step back unconsciously. There's no way, right? There's only one entry to this room. Something may have fallen behind and blocked the door, there's simply no other way. I tried to take a glance through the crack, but... What is that? Is that merman come? Okay, if I get jump scared right now, I'm going to yell. I look like scales. But the only fishy thing in that room was the merman. Touch it. Ooh, do I touch it? I probably shouldn't touch it. I'm gonna touch it. Poke. My arm passed through the door and hesitantly poked at whatever that was supposed to be. It was cold with a bit of a slimy texture that made the scales incredibly smooth, almost like velvet. Very similar to a fish, but it was completely unmoving. I patted the fishy skin with a bit more vigor, trying to trigger some sort of reaction. Hey, you? What are you doing here? Then without warning, the tail started moving, thrashing around and spluttering water everywhere. My heart couldn't handle both the relief and the scare of the sudden and unexpected reaction causing me to jolt. Okay, calm down, I'm coming. Taking a few steps back, I slammed my whole body into the door repeatedly. I could already tell my shoulder would get bruised, but that was the least of my concern right now. But eventually, thanks to my efforts, the door ended up wide open, and the sight that greeted me. Oh, he's so pretty, but also, oh no, he's on the floor. Hang on, let me move myself. God. He's so pretty, he's so muscular. It's like, you know, he's lying injured on the floor. I know, but look at how small his waist is and big his boobas are. Oh, you're so pretty. Now, that was definitely not something I was prepared for. Sprawled in front of my feet laid the merman, several meters away from the tank where he was supposed to stay. Since I only got a quick glimpse before, I didn't realize how massive he was. Oh, so he's really big, huh? You know, he's in danger. Even bigger than the giant dolphin we rescued once, meaning way past 2 meters long. Hehe, <laughs> how did you even manage to jump out? As I analyze the scene, I notice a trail of water going from the merman to the handle of the door. His entire body was racked by spasms and his mouth was wide open, gasping for, well, obviously not air. I suppose that means a merman is closer to a fish than a marine mammal. Did he seriously crawl to get out of the room? And for how long has he been here? No, never mind that, what am I supposed to do now? Look, I don't think I'm strong enough to carry it back to its tank, but we could try. Give it CPR. Uh, find a bucket of water. My eyes quickly scan the room in search of something that could be used as a recipient. My gaze ended up landing on a bucket full of cleaning equipment. That's way too small for him to fit, but the goal was just for him to be able to at least breathe. I ran towards it, didn't lose any time to empty the content to the floor in a reverberating dash. It slid across the floor next to a valve and I gathered all my strength to open it with gritted teeth. Blowing water soon rewarded me and filled the bucket to the brim. I didn't really have time to check, but hopefully it should be salty water, just like in his tank. Closing the valve, I then slid the heavy basket next to the merman, kneeling right next to it. Then, 
Put your hand in here. Oh, he's so cute. He's so pretty. He's in a lot of pain, but he's so pretty. The creature didn't seem to acknowledge my presence as he remained completely unmoving. Only when I attempted to touch his back did he spare me a glance. I was immediately seized by the whole range of emotions I could read on his face. His gaze was full of confusion, anxiety, and most certainly panic. A large frown covered his forehead with slightly trembling eyes looking up into my own. If it wasn't for his weird textured grayish-blue skin, his enormous size, pointing out his enormous size again, his pointy teeth, his bright yellow eyes with slitted pupils, his webbed hands, and of course, the giant fishtail flopping around. Anyone could have mistaken him for a human. Oh yes, uh, besides for all of the things that make him how he is. <laughs> Despite the several warnings advising me against interacting with this deadly creature of the ocean more than necessary, I just couldn't help but settle an apologetic hand on his shoulder drawn by his human-like features. He truly looked pitiful, and I just wanted to communicate my peaceful intentions. However, the message didn't quite meet the expected reaction. The merman flinched before he suddenly grabbed my wrist forcefully. Thankfully, I was covered from head to toe, and his long talons only dug into my gloves. My first instinct was to retract my arm, but my attempt fell short as he didn't even seem to notice my effort, truly showcasing the gap in raw strength that separated us both. Instead, I gently patted the bucket of water next to him hoping to get his attention back to it. Unfortunately, he seemed way too preoccupied by my presence to deviate his stare from mine, as if to further prove that point. He decided to yank my arm, rubbing my stability and the floor off my feet. I met the slippery surface of the tiling with what I thought would have been a loud yelp if I could hear myself through the headphones. I found myself sprawled on my back, hey yo! But my eyes didn't even have time to adjust to the bright lighting of the ceiling before a large shadow passed it over me. Hehe, 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 are we flirting? If the security distance rule wasn't violated before, it definitely was now. You're hot. <laughs> are, we, are we flirting? Are you into me? Because I'm so into you. If only, if I could just remember how to breathe, I would suddenly be able to smell what he ate for dinner. Despite the headphones interrupting all kinds of external noise, I could tell he was most likely screeching by the way his mouth was contorted. White sharp teeth bared at me. But there's one thing I learned in my field, is that staying calm is the most important thing to do in that kind of situation. With that much hostility, any gesture could be taken wrongly. However, thanks to his agitation, his tail hit the bucket of water, effectively stealing his attention. Look the little- oh my god, the little flap! I don't know if it's an ear or not, but the little- yeah, the little ear? This time, the merman seemed receptive to the sound and shifted his body to take a glance at the bucket and its contents completely disregarding me. His head immediately dipped under the water like a starving man, or in this case, a breathless merman. Hey, you can let go of my arm now, even though he seemed to no longer pay me any mind. His grip remained tight on my wrist, although not as much as before. I'm just not gonna move. It was unfortunate for the security distance, but I felt like moving when he couldn't see me could be more dangerous for me. If I were to guess, the reason he didn't release me yet was so he could keep me in check. I wasn't in any immediate danger for now, so all I needed to do was wait patiently for my colleagues. Now that the merman was no longer in fatal danger, I decided to call for help and drew my walkie-talkie from my belt with my free hand. I log on to the global channel to contact everyone at once. Yeah, hey, hi, it's Yinny talking from the East Wing, room C116. I found the merman out of his tank. I managed to find a way to keep him breathing, but I'll need help to move him back. My headphones let me hear a grizzled answer, confirming someone was on their way. From a safe distance, I kept watching the merman balancing his tail in satisfaction. At least it still wasn't thrashing around anymore. After a few minutes, people came rushing in, equipped with headphones. A few eyebrows were raised at the side of my captured arm before some of them start to gently nudge the merman to drop his catch. I took a long look at my wrist in search of any wounds, but all I found was a slight mark that disappeared when I massaged it a bit. The merman was then escorted back to the place where he was supposed to be, but not without resistance. His prolonged journey on the surface seemed to have visibly weakened him though, so he couldn't put up much of a fight. Still, no less than eight men were necessary to restrict and carry him back to safety. I wonder how heavy he must be for so many people to be needed. I took a step outside of the room, putting down my headphones for a short moment out of breath. You did a very good job, Yuni. I nearly jumped as Mr. Marlow took my place by my side the moment I let my nerves calm down. Well, I didn't expect my first day of the job to be this stressful. A low rumble that sounded like a chuckle raised from his throat. It's a good thing you were so quick to accept this position. I can't even imagine what troubles we would have gotten if you weren't there. Sure enough, if an animal we were supposed to take care of suddenly died, the media would assault us right away. But it, being a still unknown species, would definitely blow things out of proportion. What if we were even forced to close our doors? I didn't want to think about that. I think I was just lucky to find him before it was too late. 
but you're quick-witted enough to keep your calm and properly manage the situation. I think that's worth congratulations. I suddenly felt shy receiving a compliment from my boss. I think that anyone in my place would have done the same, so I wasn't special. Still, it felt nice to be appreciated. Well, thanks. But now it seems like we'll have to take more secure measures. We definitely can't let something like that happen again. The tank is large enough to swim, but there shouldn't be enough range to take a speed and jump high enough to actually leave the tank. At least for any other animals. I greatly underestimated the merman. It's my fault. I don't think it was your fault. We can take it as a lesson. What's important is to not repeat the same mistakes. You're right. I suppose we should look at it that way, yes. That's why I'll be counting on you for the near future. You'll have to double your vigilance with his weakened state. Do inform me if you notice any alarming signs. Maybe you should check on him and keep getting him used to your presence. He nodded goodbye and then turned around, leaving before the rest of the employees exit the room. I secured the headphones on my head and went straight back inside. During that time, they found a way to secure the top of the tank with some sort of temporary net. Hopefully, this time, he doesn't find another way to jump out of the tank. As of now, he seems to still be in a state of shock, but he progressively gained back his senses. His face is now free of that distraught frown. I glanced around, finally noticing the mess that he made. Well, everyone went back to their duty and it's my job to manage this place now, so... Mop in hand, I put much effort into scrubbing the surface to make it squeaky clean. I then took time to pick up every item that was carelessly thrown to the floor in an effort to find a way to secure the merman and put them back in their place. Without my knowing, my watch indicated it was already time for me to call it a day. My hand wipes a bead of sweat off my forehead, admiring the result of my hard work. The merman seemed to have retreated behind the rock for the night. It seemed like he had his fair amount of human interaction, which was understandable. Beside the spare of my presence, I quietly left the room after my last inspection. I closed the door, which marked the end of my first day as the merman's caretaker. Behind me, a curious pair of gleaming eyes pierced my back. It was my reflex that I found myself in front of the storeroom the day after. It was my job for so long, I guess old habits die hard. With a mental face palm, I turned on my heels only to be met with a wild puff of red hair. Hey, Innie. Cleaning already? You're there earlier than usual, aren't ya? Oh, hey, Sophia. Well, actually, I got here by mistake. I was about to head to the merman. Only at her dumbfounded face did I remember I didn't get to tell her yet. We're used to chatting for a bit by phone when we get home, but yesterday I went straight to bed and immediately dipped into a deep sleep. Uh, yeah, so... I'm the merman's caretaker now. <laughs> wow, talk about a promotion. Should I prepare a party or your funeral? That's a weird way to congratulate someone. A party then? I chuckle lightly at that. Don't kill me off so easily. Sorry, sorry. It was just... Surprise. You looked so stressed yesterday. I didn't think you would end up accepting. Well, after thinking about it, it seemed like a golden opportunity. In any case, it's great you look more relaxed about it. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not completely at ease either, but I think I built the confidence to face my fate. Oh, how my little guppy grew up so quickly. I couldn't help but roll my eyes as Sophia wiped an imaginary tear. So I guess you'll be accompanying me to fetch your food for your new friend now? I guess I am. And that wasn't the first time I set foot in the cold room. But this time, I wasn't here just to help carry some pallets for others. So what does the merman eat? Uh, good question. You don't know. The only books I've read about mermen are fairy tales. And they didn't exactly specify their diet in detail. And now I was left wondering just how much of these fairy tales are true. No one even gave you a hint. I know he comes from deep water. At least I should present him with some sea fish. That's a start. You'll get to find out his preference in due time then. I looked at the different tickets on the fridge and pallets lost in the seemingly unending list of food display in the seawater section. Mackerel, sardines, squid, and shrimp. How about I just take a bit of everything? There should be at least one thing he'll accept, right? I took a large bucket and started to fill it with every type of fish I could find. That's a lot. Yeah, but I'll need it for a bunch of taste tests. Need help to carry it all? That would be greatly appreciated. No less than two trays were needed to carry everything to our destination. Don't forget to tell me if you need help. I'll keep that in mind. I returned a wave of the hand and started to get ready. Headphones? Walkie talkie? My body is ready. I mean, my body is pretty much ready all the time for like anything. And I was surprised by the way the door opened so easily. But I found myself immediately relieved about the fact that no merman was found on the floor this time. I think that'll serve as a traumatic experience for us both. I was mostly talking to myself. I was mostly talking to myself. But from behind a rock, I could spot a puff of light blue. Oh, you're so cute. I wonder what kind of merman he is. All of these little, like, cute little, like, flippy bits remind me of an anglerfish. But also, if he was a shark merman, that'd be so cool. Because did you know that sharks have, like, two dicks? And they're actually called claspers. And instead of sitting one on top of the other, they actually sit side by side. So they just kind of dangle there like a bunch of bananas. Yeah. 
Anyways, his bright neon yellow eyes definitely took notice of me, yet he made no sign to come closer. However, even when I get closer to his tank, he didn't seem to hide either. It looked like the trays got his attention if I were to judge by the way he stared at them without even blinking. Breakfast time. I proudly opened the box in front of it, hoping to trigger some sort of reaction. There was none. You don't like it? I presented a mackerel to him, fresh from today's refill, but he wouldn't even get out of his hiding place. Would you prefer some shrimp? Zero reaction. Maybe you're just a little shy. I take a few steps back. He completely disappeared behind his rock, clearly uninterested. Great. I took a box under my arm and climbed the ladder to the top of the tank. The staff covered the whole surface with what looked like a fishing net, preventing him to hop away. However, I'd like to think that he learnt not to do that again. Hopefully, the net should prevent any unfortunate situation, but still, throwing the fish from a safe distance seemed like the best option. After all, maybe he wouldn't be able to jump, but the net wouldn't save me at all if I were to fall in the tank. And so I did just that. Puff, I bent down a third time to grab another piece and... Splaff. I stumbled but quickly took my balance as something hard hit my head. I rubbed the back of my head looking for the weapon that just intended to end my life. I'm very dramatic and just at my feet. Isn't that the fish I just... This time, the animal struck me right in the face and I struggled not to fall back in surprise, holding the guardrail behind me. Laying at my feet, the second fish I threw looked straight back at me as if to taunt me. I hesitantly grabbed it and threw it back in the tank, only for it to be immediately sent back my way. Maybe he just didn't like these ones. And so I started throwing different kinds of fish, and each and every one of them was sent back. How is there not a single thing that you like in here? Oh, look at him, he's so cute. I wanna pop him on the nose. I really wasn't expecting an answer, but the bubbles popping up around his mouth seemed to indicate an attempt at communication. I wanna stick my hand through the net and pat him on the head, but that should be a bad idea. One time I stuck my finger through a bird cage to pat a really cute bird and it bit me on the finger and it really hurt. But whatever was said was lost to my inhibiting headphones. He said, if he could just say whatever he actually wanted, things would be way easier. Remove the headphones, do not. Oh no. Alright, let's do the thing. You need to have a death wish, yes. No one ever did attempt at communicating with him from the start, right? If Murpho can sing, surely they'll be able to talk as well. Maybe I could just test it. I pulled the headphones over my head, looking down at the merman who seemed to gain a sudden interest in his eyes. Here you go, I can hear you now. Oh god, this is so hot. Oh, wow. Uh, it was pretty weird to suddenly hear the echo of my own voice in the large room. The flowing water from the pump sounded louder than what I was used to. I was pretty curious what a mermaid could sound like, to be honest. Would it be like an enchanting melody like in a fairy tale? Would it have some hidden properties still unknown to mankind? It wasn't long for me to find out. It felt more like a whisper at first. Quiet, soft, almost imperceptible. I wasn't even sure I heard it right. The movement of the merman's lips confirmed my feeling though. His eyes were staring at me, as if scrutinizing my body with every care in the world. The murmur slowly got louder. Not by much, just slightly enough for me to notice. I still couldn't tell what he was saying, but... Take a step closer. Oh god, you really want to die, don't you? Ah, anything for merman titties. A single one. Just to hear better. It felt like it was the very thing he was waiting for. His jaws opened wider, letting the sound flow out with more power. I could see it. His row of teeth. Sharp. But that wasn't what I was interested in. Take a step closer. Oh? <laughs> oh, I'm so Dunyan rings, aren't I? His voice echoed within the walls of the wide room, engulfing any other sound. Well, oh no. His melody reverberated in my head now, bouncing in my skull, immersing all thoughts. What thoughts? I saw. His delicious song flooded through my whole body. Behind my eyeballs, along my spine, from the top of my head to the tip of my toes. I took her. Well, no goodbye, Yiddy. There's no sound anymore. Cold sweat ran up my back. No, not just cold sweat. My mouth hung open, trying to scream for help. However, my words transformed into bubbles that flew to the surface without me. My limbs swayed around in a panic as water filled my lungs, but something held me back. I didn't look back to see what it was. I knew. And then, I felt a sharp pain in my left arm, then my right leg, then my neck. Red slowly invaded my field of vision, as I felt my body being relentlessly ripped to shreds. And then, it didn't hurt anymore. Damn it! That's what you get for being horny for a fish wiener. Anyway, let's do it again. Wait, what if we remove the headphones and then we put them back on? Okay, so we remove them, and then he talks to us. Alright, let's put them back on. I caught myself back from taking a step closer to the edge with a wild return to reality. What the hell was I about to do? I hastily put the headphones back on, staring at the creature with cold sweat in my back. The realization that I almost got caught in his deadly trap crept into my mind. Tension started to build in my stomach, so I stepped back under his stunned eyes. He already completely disfigured one of my colleagues, 
I was warned time and time not to let his human face fool me. You won't have me like that. You can have me in other ways though if you want. <laughs> I couldn't tell if he could understand me, but his wide eyes turned more playful. Happy. I wasn't sure yet. I could tell one thing is that he didn't think of me as a caretaker. He saw me as prey. And that is the end of the demo. Woohoo! I want to try some of the other answers though. So I want to do something. What if we give him CPR? What? Seeing from the way he guessed, it was clear air wasn't what he needed right now. How is CPR supposed to help in that case? No, I wanted to kiss him! Damn it. Carry it back to its tank. I'm not supposed to stay too close, even less touching him. Let's just try to be safe and stay far away from the range of his arms. I tentatively grabbed the end of his tail. As soon as I made contact with the slippery surface, it started to flop wildly around. Wait, calm down, I'm just trying to My words died in my mouth as I was swiftly swept off my feet by a clean tackle. Ow, that my hand went to rub the painful flesh on my bottom. I was a fool to think his arms were the most dangerous. Thankfully, I was lucky enough not to hit my head. Try again. I'm not going to give up for so little. I waited a bit for the merman to calm down before I get up from my seat. I bent down, wrapped the tail with both arms, using more strength and stability as I stepped back. Come on. Despite my best efforts, the merman didn't move one bit. Not only was he incredibly heavy, but the slimy texture of his skin made it difficult for me to get a proper grip on him. I released the tail and went in for the upper body, sliding my hands under his torso, hoping he wouldn't take it as an opportunity to attack me. Thankfully, he seemed too out of it to completely register. Contracting all the muscles in my body, I desperately tried to lift him again to no avail. Okay, maybe I was a bit optimistic about carrying a monster more than two meters long, but that was just a massive waste of time. Precious time I wasn't allowed to lose. Let's just find something else. Well, I guess the only options are call for help and find a bucket of water. Oh man, oh well. And that's the end of A Whisper of Blue. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, and I hope you enjoyed our lovely gorgeous merman as much as I did. I really like him, I think his design is so cute. I love the little fins on his ears and his coloration as well. I think he's like, like the pups of orange are very, very pretty. I wasn't able to get the other bad endings because I know there's two. I did get a variation of one, so I don't know if that actually counts as two. And I also got the neutral ending, which allows us to progress onto the next chapter. But thank you so much for experiencing this with me. I hope you guys loved it as much as I did. If you guys like this video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. And if you want to hang out outside of these videos, I stream on Twitch three times a week. Feel free to come over and hang out and say hi. But that's all for now. I'll see you guys in the next video. And until next time, take care.